Welcome. In the previous video, we have seen an introduction to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Let's continue adding more information here. Phospholipids, example, they are present in the cell membrane. They are with the help of phospholipase A2 converted into arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid can be acted upon by COX-1, COX-2 or lipooxygenase. Now, COX-1 is mainly physiological. It is constitutive in many tissues and it will help in homeostatic functions by the production of some prostaglandins like PGE2, PGI2, PGD2, thromboxane A2 and uh, PGF2, alpha, so on and so forth. These will maintain the gastrointestinal tract, the renal tract, the blood vessels. Now coming to COX-2, it is mainly induced during inflammation. Actually, it is constituted in some parts of the body, very minor. So you can think of it mainly as an induced enzyme. It is induced by cytokines and it will produce some mediators which will mediate inflammation and it will cause pain, inflammation and fever. Mainly here you can say that PGE2 is produced in large quantities. Now let us see uh, what else can happen with arachidonic acid. Lipooxygenase can act on arachidonic acid and give you leukotrienes. Okay, so we have added to what we have studied in the previous video. Correct? Here we have come to the level of understanding lipooxygenase. Last video we did not have this. We have added this now. Then we have also mentioned all the names of the prostaglandins, PGE2, PGI2, PGD2, thromboxane A2 and PGF2-alpha. Can you tell me what each of these uh, phospho, uh, prostaglandins do? Prostaglandin E2, mainly it is the homeostasis, GI protection, kidney function, platelet function, regulation of blood flow. This is the homeostatic functions of it. Now coming to PGI2. Here you can remember both of these PGI2 and PGD2 cause vasodilation. They will help the blood to flow, inhibition of platelet aggregation. And then in PGD2, you have bronchoconstriction. Remember, the bronchoconstriction happens in PGD2. Now, coming to thromboxane A2, there is platelet aggregation and uh, regulation of blood flow. This is actually platelet aggregation. So, this is an opposite effect of PGI2. Now, coming to PGF2 alpha, you have seen this, it lowers intraocular pressure, right? This you have seen as a treatment for glaucoma. This is actually showing you a lot of actions of prostaglandins as drugs. You can maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus. This is something that um, you can remember for the maintenance of ductus arteriosus, you can use prostaglandins. For glaucoma, you can use prostaglandins. You can use it for pulmonary hypertension, erectile dysfunction, for abortion, for uh, induction of labor. So basically this is going to induce labor. So you can use it for abortion. So similarly you have many functions of this but here we are not concerned about this. We are concerned about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which will stop the action of prostaglandins, correct? So now let us look at um, the action of aspirin. So you will have to explain all this and then say that aspirin is a non-selective COX inhibitor, right? It inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2. So the mechanism of aspirin is it is inhibiting both COX-1 and COX-2. So aspirin actually is short form for acetyl salicylic acid. Please remember that. And it is going to be a non-selective COX inhibitor. It is coming under the chapter with chapter autocoids under that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? And uh, it is an irreversible inhibitor of COX. Please remember this. It's an irreversible inhibitor of COX. Rest of the NSAIDs which we are going to study are reversible. Now, you have seen in the last video that in low doses, it causes an anti-platelet effect. In uh, 2 to 3 gram per day, it causes an analgesic and antipyretic effect. And in high doses, it causes anti-inflammatory action. Now, let us look at the details. How exactly does it do this? So, here you can see aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. It is a proto-dry type drug for this group and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is the prototype drug aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. <clears throat> so, we told you that it is irreversible inhibitor of COX. Now, let us look at the antiplatelet or the antithrombotic effect. <clears throat> so, you can see that at low doses only, it will work as antiplatelet. What will happen if you give high dose? <clears throat> if you give high dose, both PGI2 and thromboxane A2 will get inhibited. At See, at low dose, what happens? Uh, PGI2 will be there. 
only thromboxane A2 is inhibited. But if you give high dose of aspirin, then even PGI2 will get inhibited. So you can see this diagram, it will help you understand. See, low dose of aspirin, thromboxane A2 is inhibited. High dose, what will happen? 2 to 3 gram per day if you give both PGI2 and P T thromboxane A2 get inhibited. PGI2 causes vasodilation and inhibits platelet aggregation. <clears throat> thromboxane A2 causes vasoconstriction and promotes platelet aggregation. So, both are like acting against each other. <clears throat> so, if you want to have an antiplatelet activity, then better you have a inhibitor of thromboxane A2 only. Let the cyclins be there so that they will nicely, the blood will cycle. The cyclins you have to retain. Don't kill the cyclins also. Fine. This is the low dose aspirin. Now, let us move on to the next effect. So, if you give 2 to 3 gram per day, what will happen? You will have analgesic effect, antipyretic effect. Now, let us look at both of these. Analgesic effect is written here, antipyretic is, is written here. First of all, analgesic is for minor pains, not for major pains like uh, not a RTA, not a road traffic accident or major things like that. This is only for small pains, dysmenorrhea, painful menstruation, pain associated with any inflammation, then mosquito, musculoskeletal pain, such things only you can use NSAIDs, okay. So how are these NSAIDs going to work? First of all, they are going to have a mainly a peripheral action. The, pe the prostaglandins are inhibited. These prostaglandins were stimulating the peripheral nerve, right? So you are going to prevent the sensitization of peripheral nerve. So no pain sensation, not, you know, not for high pain, but yeah, for normal pain. Now coming to um, the central actions, then the subcortical site also, the, the pain threshold is increased. So you can tolerate pain um, up to some threshold. This is not going to be as effective as an opioid analgesic, but however, it will help you in managing day-to-day -day pain from dysmenorrhea or inflammation or musculoskeletal pain. The good thing about these drugs are they relieve the pain <clears throat> without causing sedation, resp respiratory depression, tolerance or dependence. Great, right? Now, let us move on to the antipyretic effect. Down here, you can see the antipyretic effect. So, uh, that is the temperature. The fever should not uh, increase or the temperature, body temperature should not increase. The best thing is, it will reduce fever and it will not the affect the normal body temperature also. This is a good thing. Now, how does it do this? In the hypothalamus, you have a thermoregulatory center. Remember where it is acting. In the hypothalamus, there is a thermoregulatory center. This, If this is disturbed, then only you will have fever. Now, what this NSAID is doing, it is going to reset, reset the hypothalamic thermostat. So, it is going to work on the thermostat or the thermoregulatory center which is present in the hypothalamus and it is going to reset it and hence, it is going to reduce the elevated body temperature. The best part is it is not going to affect normal body temperature. How is the heat loss promoted? By causing vasodilation in the cutaneous uh, blood vessels and also it increases the sweating. So, they promote heat loss by causing cutaneous vasodilation and sweating. Okay. So, again you have to write this word inhibition of prostaglandins in hypothalamus. Fine. Where are the prostaglandins being inhibited here? In the hypothalamus. Okay. The last thing we will look in this video is the anti-inflammatory effect. The all the other effects we will see in the next video. So, we what and all we saw till now? Anti-platelet effect, anti-analgesic uh, effect, anti-pyretic effect. Now, we are going to look at the fourth one, anti-inflammatory effect, the main four, right? Anti-inflammatory effect, you know you have to give a little higher dose, that is 4 to 6 gram per day in divided doses. These drugs are only symptomatic relief of the infection, uh, inflammation. It is not going to actually remove the cause of the inflammation, right? Only the symptomatic relief or the symptoms are going to be relieved for you. What are the sign, uh, symptoms that will be relieved? Pain, tenderness, swelling, vasodilation, leukocyte infiltration, etc. So, what you should know, COX-2 should be inhibited here, right? Because these are anti-inflammatory. So, pain will be inhibited, tenderness, swelling will be reduced, vasodilation will be reduced, etc. Okay. Now, uh, main thing you have to write here, it will not affect the progression of the underlying disease. Now, let us go. How does it work? It inhibits the prostaglandin synthesis. You will definitely write that. Also, other mediators of inflammation will be 
reduced. How? Because prostaglandin main thing is cut off there. So bradykinin less, may, make histamine less, make serotonin less, make uh, then look at this, inhibit the granulocyte adher adherence to the damaged vasculature. So there will be modulation of the T cell function, stabilization of the lysosomal membrane, inhibition of chemotaxis. So can you just say again what and all are the anti-inflammatory actions? Inhibition of the prostaglandin synthesis, inhibition of the inflammatory mediators like bradykinin, histamine, serotonin. Then you have the inhibition of granulocytes, adherence to the damaged vasculature, cause a modulation in the T cell function, inhibit the chemotaxis and stabilize the lysosomal membrane. Fine. This is all we saw in this video. Let us revise. At low dose, it will cause antiplatelet effect. At 2 to 3 gram per day in divided doses, it will cause analgesic to effect and antipyretic effect. At 4 to 6 gram per day, it will cause anti-inflammatory effect. Come back, we will see all the other effects also.